At this point, I have everything set up, but I do need my line segment between P and Q. So I've got a line that I need to set up right there. How do I do that? Well, I want to look at my slope. My slope is the rise over the run, and the rise is the, the height of P minus the height of Q. So we'll type Y equals, let's do our slope. Remember MX plus B, where M is your slope? Well, it's the height of P, which in my case is the square root of 8 squared minus the cosine squared of A plus the sine of A. That's the height of P. And we're subtracting the height of Q, which in my case is the sine of A. So the, the plus sine of A and the, and the minus sine of A, they're going to cancel out. So you could just leave that out. Over the run, and the run is the x position of P, which is always 0, minus the x position of Q, which in my case is the cosine of A. So I could just write the negative cosine of A in this case. Now I've got my slope. And I, I'm using A's and not X's there because the, the location of P and Q is based on the input A. And it's going to give you a number value, right? This shouldn't be a variable value. At this point, it should be uh, an exact value. And I'm going to do MX plus B. So X is my input. And then I need the Y intercept for this approach. So I'm going to use plus, again, the height of P. P is the Y intercept of this line. So it's 8 squared minus the cosine squared of oops, cosine squared of a minus, well, plus, excuse me, the sine of a in my case. And there's my line. Now, my line segment, let's just see what happens here. Wait, okay, it seems to be working. There are no issues here, except, well, yes, my line will disappear here whenever cosine is zero. So that's something to think about, which we'll get to in a moment, right? So my line segment is disappearing there when cosine is zero. We'll fix that. Now, we need the segment to be a segment and not a line. So I need it to always go from, let's say, in this case, where P starts to where Q, where, where point P is to where point Q is. So I could do this. I could say curvy brackets from point P, the exposition of point P is zero, up to, let's restrict our domain, up to the exposition of the point Q, which is the cosine of A. And that does seem to work, except here, as I turn this around, notice now it disappears. Because in this case, Q is less than P, so X can't, the domain restrictions will give us nothing. So we need to account for whichever is smaller, the exposition of Q or the exposition of P. So if we go back to our formula, let's stretch this out a little bit to see. I'm going to use the min function, min for min. Pick the minimum. Tell it. Pick whatever is smaller, 0, which is where P is, or the cosine of A, which is where Q is. And then go up to whatever is bigger. Type in our max function. Uh, what's it going to be bigger? 0 or the cosine of A. And what this will do is it will redefine the domain based on whether Q is smaller or bigger than when the exposition of Q is smaller than or bigger than the exposition of P. Isn't that really cool? We set up this function here, but it is undefined at certain values of A. For example, if I go up to A is pi over 2, right? it looks like it disappears, and it does because the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and you can't divide by 0, it's undefined, but you don't need to really do anything about it. If I click off the equation, let's say here, you can see there still is that vertical green segment before that we created, and that's the segment between R and P, because at the cosine of pi over, uh, at pi over 2, uh, R and Q are equal in position, right? Their x values are the same, their y values are always the same, but here their x values are both 0. So we have a line segment defined at that point that we'll show in the animation. 